Hey, what's up you guys? It's Connor and today I'm going to be doing an enormous book haul. This is probably going to be my biggest book haul for the entire year. I found out that there was going to be a book outlet sale coming up, so I ended up filling my cart with stuff and then as it got closer, some of those things started to decrease to the point that I didn't think that it was going to even make it to the sale. So then I made like three orders before the sale even started and I didn't actually end up making any orders during the sale, so yeah. I also got sent some books from publishers, so I'm gonna jump into those first and then show you everything that I got myself. First up, I requested and was sent a book from Atria Books, and that is The Right Side by Spencer Quinn. This one follows this girl who was in the military and then she ends up getting injured while in Afghanistan. And once she's back, she is forever changed. She's missing an eye and her face is very much scarred up. And when her hospital roommate dies, she decides to go on a cross-country journey. And when she gets to where she's going, she finds out that the daughter of the person that she was in the hospital with that passed away is missing. So then she teams up with some random dog that decides to follow her around, trying to find this little girl and save her. And I think it sounded really interesting, so I wanted to give this one a shot. So I'll be doing a review of this when I finish it. It's also blurred by Stephen King, so it seems like it's gonna be pretty good. Next, I have this Blast Off Into Summer with Tor, Tor Box. They ask me if I want to participate in promotions for some of their books, and I say, hell yeah, because I love Tor. I don't remember what is in this box, so we're gonna find out together. <laughs> I honestly don't even remember them asking me about the summer box, but that could just be because my memory is faulty. The first thing in here is this thing that says Miami-Dade Police Department, which I live in Florida, so that's not that far away. Graveyard Shift, that's this book. This one comes out in July of 2017, and this one follows a guy named Alex and his partner, he's a detective or something, Marcus, and Alex is a former pharaoh slash mummy, and Marcus is a vampire, and someone has been poisoning this blood substitute that has allowed vampires to join society, and so now they're trying to figure it out and stop that from happening. That sounds pretty interesting. Some urban fantasy stuff maybe happening in Miami, so <laughs> check that one out when I get a chance. I don't know who packs books like that, but they did. So they ended up sending me this book, which is Nothing Left to Lose by Dan Wells. After that is the summer sticker. They always send the sticker that is on the front of the box. They also sent a wild card sticker for Dead Man's Hand. And they also sent the book. This is Dead Man's Hand, wild cards number seven. I've read wild cards number 22. And I did a book review of that, so I'll leave that up in the card symbol if you want to check it out, because the Wild Card series is a mosaic series, so different authors all contribute to each novel. It comes in sets of three, so each set of three books is kind of together, and then you can always jump in after one of those. And I think that Tor's also republishing a lot of the older ones that went out of print so that newer people can go in and read the beginning ones, so I'm excited to jump into this one. I've been actually looking at the wild card books online to get some of them, so this is perfect. I would love to go back and read the first one and just read it all the way through, but if I jump around, that's okay too. After that is going to be 12 Days by Stephen Barnes. This one mainly follows a guy named Terry who was in the military and his unit has reunited back in the United States and they're planning to do a heist so that they don't have to ever work again. And obviously they're going against their honor as soldiers and servicemen by stealing <laughs> and doing that kind of stuff. But then they start to get entangled with these people that live near where they're gonna perform their heist or something like that. And there's also a terrorist group that's involved. So hopefully I'll be able to get to this one soon and let you guys know if it is absolutely amazing. <gasps> yes! So I got sent Shattered Minds by Laura Lamb. This is a Pacifica novel, which if I'm correct, yes, has something to do with False Hearts, which I read and reviewed last year and I absolutely loved it. It was about a set of conjoined twins that were separated when they were 15, but they were raised in a closed community, like a cult. And they live in this science fiction-y world where there's dream sharing. And one of the twins ends up getting mixed up in some really bad stuff and the other twin has to go undercover to figure out what the heck was happening. And I tweeted Laura soon after finishing False Hearts because I was wondering if it was going to be a trilogy or what was going on, and I think it's a trilogy of standalones. So they all are in the same world, but you can jump 
and read whichever ones sound the most interesting, which will probably be all of them. So this one is gonna follow a girl named Karina, and Karina has a need to kill people. She has been experimented on, and she was created by this company named Sudis. And the only way that she's able to prevent herself from killing people is that she has these extremely vivid dreams using Verve, which is the dream sharing chemical that people have been using. And also Karina has some secrets about Sudis, and so she is now going to try to take down Sudis by risking everything. And I'm so pumped for this. I am definitely going to be reading this one ASAP. Probably after the next book I finish, I'll be jumping into this one because yes, yes, I want it in my life. Next is An Alchemy of Masks and Mirrors, book one in the Risen Kingdom series by Curtis Craddock. This one follows a girl named Isabel and she is the daughter of the ruler of this land. And the ruler of this land is able to steal people's lives, like life forces, and use them for himself but she doesn't have that power and she also has a deformed hand so her father doesn't really like her all that much and a guard that is assigned to her is the only reason why she is really alive and doing okay because she's ignored she's able to pursue her, her love for science and mathematics and when an engagement to a prince to another kingdom pops up she then has to navigate the waters of a new political system and all of the craziness but that entails as well as maybe some magical stuff having to do with mirrors. I'll let you guys know what I think of this one when I get to it. This one comes out in August. The second to last book that Tor sent me is going to be Firebrand by AJ Hartley. This is the second book in the Steeplejack series trilogy. Not sure. I haven't read the first one yet so I'm not going to read the synopsis for this and I don't think I have the first one and if I do I forgot about it. I'm pretty sure I do not have it so I'm gonna have to look on Goodreads and see what this one is all about but they did send it to me so so thank you. And the last book that Tor sent me is Molly's Story, which also came with this little bag. I'm not sure what's in here. I thought it was going to be one of those foldable dog bowls, but it's actually a frisbee that has Molly's Story on the front. This book comes out in July, and it is maybe a companion? I'm not quite sure. W. Bruce Cameron is the person that wrote A Dog's Purpose. I have access to A Dog's Purpose, which I have been meaning to read. I just had a couple of other dog books that I wanted to read first. So, after I read A Dog's Purpose, I'm going to jump into this one because I don't know how they all relate to each other because there's some other ones too. There's Ellie's story and Bailey's story, so I'm wondering if they are all connected and I don't want to read the synopsis because I don't want to be spoiled. So I'm going to read A Dog's Purpose first and then figure out where I need to go from there. But thank you Tor so much. I'm not sponsored by Tor or anything. They just send me some of their books that I can show you guys and get really excited about with you guys. So thanks again. Before getting into the book outlet stuff, I bought a couple of books myself. One was from Barnes and Noble and that was Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shauna McGuire. This is the second book in the, I don't know, it has a name but I don't remember it. The first book was Every Heart a Doorway which follows these children that are at this school after they've gone to different worlds and have experienced different worlds and really enjoyed it and want to go back but they ended up getting sent back to our world and they're having to cope with that. This one follows the story of Jack and Jill that were in Every Heart a Doorway and it follows them before Every Heart of Doorway when they first go to the other world that they went to. They were really interesting characters in the first book, so I'm really excited to see where they'll go with this one. And I ended up buying it from Barnes & Noble because they have signed editions, so this one is signed. And I also picked up from Amazon Blue Beetle, the new 52 volume two because I could not find it anywhere. I've been looking for this for like three years and I just finally gave up and ordered it online. I really enjoyed the first volume and this is it. It's just volume one and two. So I'll be rereading volume one and then I will be reading this one and do a little bit of a comic book review when I finish that. But I really liked the first volume and I also picked up I Hate Fairyland by Scotty Young and this was one of the ones that I was really excited about after attending BEA last year but I never got around to reading it so I ended up picking it up and I really really enjoyed it it's just so gory and crazy and the little girl's a psychopath but it's just a really fun read so I'm definitely going to be continuing with this one when I pick up the second volume at some point now on to the book outlet purchases the first one I made was this one which is deceivingly large there's actually not that many books in here, but you'll see when I open it. 
I've been really getting into comics again for some reason, so I've just picked up a lot of comics recently. The first one is going to be Suicide Squad Volume 1, which is Kicked in the Teeth. I really enjoyed the Suicide Squad movie, so I wanted to give the comics a shot, and I think that the Suicide Squad movie is based off the New 52 comics. If not, oh well. But I really enjoy the concept of the Suicide Squad, so I'm hoping to really like this as well. And the artwork seems pretty good, so... Hopefully I'll be reading this one soon. I also picked up Batman Volume 4, which is, again, a part of the New 52 series that ended and something else is going on now, but I'm still stuck in the New 52 because I want to read some of the series that I never got to finish, which one of them was Batman. I really like the Batman comics. Not a huge fan of the movies, just because I think that the Batman voice is so annoying, but I really like the comics, so I'm going to be continuing this one. I also picked up the first volume in Harley Quinn, which is a part of the New 52. This one came with a mask, and I think the mask is incredibly hilarious looking. This one has a little bit of damage right here, and I'm not sure if that was damaged before or not, but nothing a little tape can't fix. And the comic book is behind it, so I'll have to open it up and get the comic book out later, but it is the first comic book. There it is on the back. You can see, and it comes with the mask, which is so funny to me. I really liked Harley Quinn in the movie, and I'm wondering if the Harley Quinn comics are just as interesting. Thus, Suicide Squad and Harley Quinn. And because I love Neil Gaiman so much, obviously here's my Neil Gaiman section, I ended up picking up Lady Justice, which is the Complete Comics Volume 1, and I don't know what this is about at all. I just saw Neil Gaiman's name on it and I wanted it. <laughs> These are the stories of women tragically wronged, but due to forces beyond our understanding, they are able to get the justice they so richly deserve. It seems like it's just gonna be a bunch of ladies getting revenge, on the people that have wronged them, and I am okay with that. Perfect. And the last book in the first order that I made, these were the ones that had the least number of copies left on the Book Outlet website, is The Lost Air by 2ET Sutherland. This is the second book in the Wings of Fire series, which, as you guys know, is one of my favorite middle grade series, but I don't have books one or two. I just have three through seven, so I ended up picking up the second one so that I could add it to my collection for when I want to go back and reread the series, because this one was actually my favorite in the series so far, possibly. So yeah, I wanted to pick it up, and conveniently enough, this one didn't have a remainder mark, so perfect. These were the next set of books that were under threat, and I was right on that. A lot of these didn't make it to the sale. The first one in here is another Neil Gaiman book, and that is the Graveyard Book, the graphic novel edition, the complete thing, so it's, it's quite chunky. I read the Graveyard Book a while ago. I can't really remember how long ago it was, but I really did enjoy it. So I want to experience the story again, and a great way to do that is to read the graphic novel version of the original story because it'll always be a little bit different. And this one is adapted by P. Craig Russell, the winner of the Harvey and Eisner Awards. I also picked up Lowball, which is edited by George R. R. Martin and Melinda M. Snodgrass. I have actually already read this book. I had a mass market paperback version of it, but I don't like mass markets. So I ended up picking up the hardcover when I saw it on Book Outlet. I already linked my review up in the card symbol, so you can check that out, but I really enjoy this world. It's, a, it's about these people that have been mutated by an alien virus. Some people are called jokers because they can't pass as regular humans, like Marcus here, he has a snake tail, and other people do pass as regular humans and they're called aces and they just have superpowers like flight or super strength etc and then there's also regular humans it has a whole undertone of being oppressed and being a minority it's a little bit how the mutants and x-men are not liked and are ostracized but then they end up saving the day kind of the same thing I then added Wings of Fire, Escaping Peril to my cart, which is book eight in the series. I haven't read this one yet. This is the one that I'm on, and I think book nine and a prequel book have also come out in the series, so I'm a little bit behind on this series now, but I'm excited to catch back up because this one is a very good middle grade series if you're looking for more recommendations. <laughs> and the last book that was in this box of my book outlet triple order is The Shadow Throne by Jennifer A. Nielsen. This is the third book in the Ascendance trilogy. I read the first two, absolutely loved the second one, ended up giving it five stars, so I really want to finish up the trilogy and read this one and see how it's all going to wrap up. This is another fantastic middle grade series if you're looking for more. Now on to the last box <laughs> that I ended up ordering because Books and Lala had like a coupon code or something like that. So I ended up making this order because it was going to be cheaper to order it the day before the sale started 
than if I had waited for the sale to start. So the first book in here is a book that I have been requested to read and review for so long by so many people, so I ended up just picking it up. That is The Land of Stories, The Wishing Spell by Chris Colfer, and I'm not sure when I'll get to it, but people seem to really, really love this middle grade series, and I am curious to see why that is. <laughs> I also picked up Mockingbird by Chuck Wendig. This is the second book in the Miriam Black trilogy, which I read the first book, and I think I did a review for it. I did. I'll leave it up in the card symbol. This one follows a girl that when she touches someone's skin, she sees exactly when and how they're gonna die. And at the beginning of the first book, she touches someone's skin, and she finds out that she's gonna be present for their death. And then she has to try to figure out if she's going to try to run from that fate. Can she change fate? All of those different questions. And I am excited to read the second book. I really like Chuck Wendig's writings. We'll see when I read this one. I also got Fall of Hades by Richard Paul Evans. This is the sixth book in the Michael Vay series, which is about these children that all have powers that are based around electricity. I really, really loved the first couple of books. And then I think as the series has gone on, it is not as good and I think I rated the fifth book two and a half stars or something like that but there's only two books left and they're super quick reads so I wanted to just power through and figure out what's gonna happen to all these children there aren't too many science fiction young adult series so I wanted to see if this one picks back up before it wraps up in the seventh book I also just want powers and I'm jealous of the people that are in this book Speaking of young adult science fiction, I also picked up United as One, which is the last book in the Lorian Legacies series, which is written by Pitticus Lore, but that's a pseudonym for James Frey. He's the one that did that non-fiction autobiography that ended up not actually being non-fiction, it was fiction, and Oprah yelled at him on her show. I started reading the series a really, really long time ago, and I just wanted to finish it up and see how everything is gonna wrap up. The sixth book ended so crazily and I did not expect it at all so I'm very curious to see the repercussions of that ending in this book and see what's gonna happen. I also know that he's continuing it I think in a different series like a sequel series to this one. I'm not sure if I'm gonna read that one but I definitely wanted to finish up this one. Another comic book that I picked up is Death of the Family the Joker version. It has this is a collection of all of the Death in the Family comic books that are in the New 52 that overlap so Batgirl, Batman, Nightwing, Batman and Robin, I'm not sure what all the other ones are. Some Suicide Squads in here as well. So it just has a bunch of different comics all wrapped up into the story of death of the family. Again, I've really enjoyed the Batman comics, so I wanted to see the full story around an event that happens in the Batman comics. I've already read the event from a couple of different series, mainly the Batman one and Nightwing, but I wanted to see all the rest without having to buy all of the volumes for every single Batman-related comic in the New 52 universe. Next is Half a War by Joe Abercrombie. This is the third book in the Shattered Sea trilogy, and I've read the first two. I wasn't too impressed with the first one, I think that it just was not as good as I was hoping it would be and then the second one I liked it significantly better than the first one So I'm hoping that that continues with half a war and I really enjoy this one as well I have a couple of other books by Joe Abercrombie that I haven't read yet But I just want to finish off this trilogy first and then jump into those other ones like the first law trilogy and Some of the companions with that like red country the second to last book is Envision by Sherilyn Kenyon This is the seventh book in the Chronicles of Nick series, which I really enjoy. I think that the main character has such a good regard for women and I think that it's a very positive message that teenage boys should read and be encouraged to follow. This is set in the same universe as her Shadowhunters series, so there's a lot of paranormal things, demons and such like that. I am really pumped to continue with this one because I really enjoy Nick as a character and I will continue to read these books however many she comes out with, which I know is a pretty large commitment. <laughs> and the last book in this entire haul is A Giraffe and a Half by Shel Silverstein. I've been wanting to collect all of Shel Silverstein's books, and when I saw A Giraffe and a Half, I had to get it. I actually have not read this one before, so I'm going to be reading this one soon. And Shel Silverstein was just a large part of my childhood. I don't know how I avoided this one. I will be getting all of them eventually, so that when I have kids, I can read these stories with them. This is a very long video, and I apologize for that, but I have a lot of books to show. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and comment down below what books you want me to read sooner rather than later. Which titles are you the most excited about? Which ones do you want me to do reviews on? Anything else you want me to know, leave it down below and I will talk to you guys next time.